Straight ahead on CBS 12 Action News at Noon, Reading's fire investigators are probing several suspicious fires at area schools. We'll show you what happened when a train hit a truck in Vina. The driver managed to walk away. And why are lawmakers in Sacramento talking about a rock instead of the budget? That story and more next as CBS 12 Action News at Noon starts now. You're watching Action News at Noon on CBS 12 with Linda Watkins Bennett and Rob Blair with Weather. Action News, live, local, late breaking. Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us today. An early morning fire claims the life of a 64-year-old Gerber man. Cal Fire crews were called to a home on San Benito Avenue near Adelpha Street at about 4 a.m. After knocking the fire down, firefighters found Henry Glass dead inside. Investigators are working to determine the cause of the fire. Crews were originally called to the home for a medical alert, but learned of the fire on their way. Firefighters say the home did not have any working smoke detectors. Glass's dog also perished. Reading fire investigators were called out to two school campuses this morning because of arson fires. Both fires were out by the time they got there. The first was at Sycamore Elementary. A maintenance worker found smoldering bark from a fire started on top of a dumpster lid. A second call was at Enterprise High School. Fire investigators say there was a burn spot on an outside wall. Reading police are taking care of the report because the fires were so small. Well, things are back to normal today in North Chico after PG&E crews stopped a gas leak. Officials say a maintenance worker broke the line digging a trench at Little Folks Preschool on Burnap Avenue at about 4.15 yesterday. Fire crews responded immediately and evacuated children from the school, then turned off power to surrounding homes and asked residents to stay inside. It took PG&E crews about two hours to successfully stop the leak, getting it under control at about 6. They say it is once again safe to enter that area. A big rig driver escapes injury when his truck is hit by a train. It happened at 10.30 yesterday morning when CHP officers say a 38-year-old truck driver from Paradise was pulling across the tracks on Highway 99 north of Vina and was hit by a northbound Union Pacific freight train. Officers say the truck driver did not look both ways before crossing at an unmarked intersection. Nobody was hurt, but debris was scattered for nearly a quarter of a mile. Officers and railroad crews worked to clean up the mess. The train finally headed back out at about 2.30. A Red Bluff man is sentenced to life in prison for setting his girlfriend on fire. Joseph Verney was sentenced yesterday as part of a plea deal. He pleaded guilty to an aggravated mayhem charge last month, just days before he was scheduled for trial on an attempted murder charge. Verney set fire to his living girlfriend, Michelle Bonuelo, said she slept at their apartment last July. He will be eligible for parole in seven years. The Red Bluff Police Department has a reapplied for a huge grant. It was one of 34 departments that applied for thousands of dollars, but because of an accounting error by the U.S. Justice Department, missed out on the money. Forty-five other agencies that didn't apply received the funding. Red Bluff was in line for $261,000. The chief has reapplied and will know by October whether his department will receive any money. No budget, a nearly $20 billion deficit, California in crisis, and today state lawmakers held a hearing to discuss a rock. That's right, they talked about the California state rock. Kula Janulis is in, with the, in Sacramento with the legislature uh, that some critics say is out of touch with reality. We can get along fine without a state rock. Stripping the state rock of its title was on the agenda at the Capitol today, causing the committee chair to question their priorities. Really, it's symbolic and uh, has very little benefit to the public, and I think particularly at this time with all the other problems the state's facing, uh, it's a real question. So when I first saw this bill, I threw my hands up. As lawmakers review the proposed law, which would remove serpentine as the official state rock because it consists of a cancer-causing mineral, Senate President Daryl Steinberg defended their work, insisting the budget is still a priority. It is a legislature of 120 people where everyone is entitled to bring forward their ideas. Well, I'm just happy they're working. Some people we talked to didn't mind the rock talk because they believe a select few will hash out the budget behind the scenes. Others were frustrated by what they're choosing to focus on. Yeah, let's just waste some more money and talk about a rock. I think it's a waste of um, time and energy that they're using when there's other pressing issues. 
Yesterday, Daryl Steinberg said California's 58 counties should be given more responsibility over public safety and social service programs. It's part of the Democratic proposal to close the state's $19 billion budget deficit and would be funded by making permanent a temporary vehicle tax hike. The state would also impose a new oil tax. Governor Arnold Schwarzenegger and Republicans oppose any new taxes. Well, a new coalition has formed in Chico to protect the agricultural green line. Action News reporter Audrey Assistio has more on the group's message and why it claims time is of the essence. More than a dozen concerned residents marched up the Chico City Council steps Monday afternoon to announce their newly formed coalition designed to defend the green line. The biggest concerns right now are the green line um, and not moving the green line. Currently there's a lot of vacancies within our Chico urban area to expand and so by moving out into our green line area we take away precious ag land. The Green Line limits development on prime agriculture land. Chico City Council members will discuss sustainability and land use components of the draft general plan Tuesday. And the newly formed group plans to express their concerns. Nature is not necessarily linear. And there are zigzags and jags and peninsulas. And essentially what the city has done to create this uh, seemingly easy solution is they've piece by piece uh, next, all the land around our farm. Butte County Supervisor Jane Dolan has been a strong Green Line advocate for years, but with her recent election loss to Councilman Larry Wall, coalition members say it's crucial now more than ever to have their voices heard. There are statements about things that should be done or should be considered, and so things need to be rephrased to shall be done, shall be considered. There are places where the terms open space need to be specifically addressed. In Chico, Audrey Assistio for Action News. The council hearing will take place at the Chico City Council Chambers today, beginning at 2 o'clock this afternoon. Well, turning now to weather, pretty nice start to summer. We turn things over to Rob Blair now in the AccuWeather Center. Hi, Rob. Hey, Linda. And, uh, yeah, uh, no big surprises, and that is good news for the second day of summer. You can see right now high pressure building into Northern California. That means mid-90s for us, 100s down in the desert southwest. So this uh, area of high pressure is acting as a heat pump, if you will, and pumping some of that desert air in through the Sacramento Valley. Temperatures right now... Very nice for this noon hour. We're still in the 70s, at least in some locations, 77 to 83 degrees with sunshine. And later on this afternoon, it is going to get warmer. 95 degrees today in Chico and around 96 in Redding. So we could see some mid and upper 90s today. Still, that's pretty normal for this time of year. No 100s as of yet, and it looks like uh, we could inch out June with no triple digits. That's good news. Your extended AccuWeather forecast through the rest of June coming up in just a few minutes. Linda. All right. Thanks, Rob. When CBS 12 Action News at Noon continues, the top U.S. officer in Afghanistan has some explaining to do on Capitol Hill about an interview published in Rolling Stone magazine. Waiting for word from a federal judge on whether he'll overturn the president's ban on deep water drilling. I'm Joel Brown on Fort Walton Beach, Florida. The latest on the spill, coming up. But first, the latest from Wall Street.